I was convicted of a crime that I didn't do. And I'm facing a mandatory sentence of six years. When I was 17, I served time, which was five years. Now that I might be going back to jail, I'm leaving a lot of people, as far as my loved ones, friends. I just got my, my mind clouded as of right now. Just a little nervous, like kind of like an upset feeling right now, but I'm staying positive, hoping for the best in my situation. You know, just your last meal before <laughs> you go in, kind of like the last supper, right? Yeah. Tell me when it's enough. My younger brother Tariq, he grew up in St. Nicholas Project, so this is the only home that he knows. <laughs> the last bite. <laughs> I usually take the stairs, because I only live on the third floor. As I reached the second floor, the cop that arrested me hopped out of the hallways. He asked for my ID. Someone that lives in the building also was coming down the stairs. And they started searching him and found crack cocaine in his pocket. The officer stated that he seen me making a drug sale in the stairwell. I know Tyree Guilford, but I don't know him. We don't even really know each other besides high and bar. I know he doesn't have anything to do with nothing. I testified in his court case for his trial and his defense to let the jury know that it was all me. There were no hand-to-hands, there were no conversations, there was nothing of that manner that can even give the officers any inkling to even stop us to make them feel that me and him had anything to do with each other. They took that upon themselves, that's the injustice. It's things like that that hurts families, that's, that takes people away from their family. taking this trip tonight, knowing that this trip is not a good trip for me. I would, I, I would never ride a bus for nine hours, but tonight I find myself I'm doing it. And I'm doing it because it's about my son and his innocence. What the sentencing does for me and my family, the sentencing incarcerates us all. So not only are we trying to make ends meet outside and take care of our own households, but we also have to take care of someone who's incarcerated. And it's draining, it's taxing, because while we're supposed to be moving forward, we are at a standstill. I feel like my life is on hold. There's a lot of positive things I could have been doing around this time. I was just about to finish parole. I was working a job. Now that I'm incarcerated, I'm unable to do certain things that I like to do. And the system is, to me, is designed to send young black people away. And it seems like even though I was the person in the wrong, and I informed them I was a person in the wrong, they still didn't want to hear anything. They just wanted to convict two people. I've spent all of my life trying to give my brother and my family a better life so that we can get out of this housing project. But again, the system is telling me, you don't have a right to help your brother. We'll tell you what life we think he should have. And this is the life in prison.
Welcome to your cell. You're going to be here for 23 hours a day. You are going to undergo many different kinds of reactions. 